I'm Evangelist Daniel King, and my favorite verse in the whole Bible is everyone who calls in the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm with my friend Joe Franklin, and he is excited about evangelism. Joe, thank Woo. you so much for joining me on the podcast. Yeah, thanks so much for having me, Dr. King. It's an honor. Now, you're here at New Day Church in South Lake, Texas. Your father's the pastor here. His name is Ricky, Ricky Franklin. And uh, tell me a little bit about how you grew up as a pastor's kid. Man, so I grew up with, I have nine, eight brothers and sisters, six brothers, three sisters. And so I grew up in a big family. And with a pastor's kid, my parents always invited us into ministry. So if I can, I just share my testimony real quick. We actually went to a revival meeting and I saw this vision of myself riding into heaven on my parents' back and they were on roller skates. And they're riding into the pearly gates and as they go in, I get pushed back off their back. And I hear Jesus' voice say, I wanna know you for you. I wanna have my own personal relationship with you. I grew up learning a lot about God. When I was five years old, I told the Sunday school teacher, you're not telling the story right. It goes like this. And I got up there and taught the class. So I knew about God, but it wasn't until I was 13 that I really knew God as a personal Lord and Savior. And it changed my life forever. And so that vision was an encounter with God. And did you ever resent being a, a pastor's kid? I didn't. I loved it. Did you ever have a time of, of rebellion or running away from God? No, not really. No. Not really. <laughs> I, I was actually raised by parents who, who were Christians, and uh, they were missionaries in Mexico. And so to be part of our family was, was to be part of the ministry. Yeah. Uh, I'm a big believer that God does not just call individuals. He calls yes. families. He's a generational God. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yeah. And so he's the God of Ricky Franklin and Joe Franklin. And you're not yes. married yet. You don't have any not kids. Yet. Not, not yet. Not yet. So no, no kids yet. But, but someday you'll have kids. Yeah. And the anointing increases uh, from generation to, to, to generation. And, and yeah. so you've, you've been involved in ministry yeah. growing up here at the church. But uh, now... Uh, you feel called to be an evangelist. You, you, yeah. you actually were youth pastor here at the church. Yeah. For, for how long were you the youth pastor? I was the youth pastor here for three years. Okay. And, and then now you, you feel called to be an evangelist. Tell yeah. me, how did that happen? How did you know that you were called to be an evangelist? When I was five years old, me and my four siblings were sitting in the van, and the, the, this guy prophet from New Zealand had just spoken at the youth group. My dad was the youth pastor at the time. And he came over to the van and he just began to prophesy over each one of us. And when he got to me, he just said, I see the nations coming to you. I see you going all over the world and preaching the gospel of Jesus and bringing millions of people to Jesus. And just prophesied that over me, this calling of evangelist on my life. And ever since then, I've always been drawn to people and drawn. People just come to me and they tell me their life story and I'm able to just share Jesus with them and just have a heart to see people come to know Jesus. So how old were you when that man gave the prophecy? I was just five years old. Wow, that is very similar to my story because when I was five years old, someone prophesied that I was called to be an evangelist. Wow. So my father pastored a little tiny church in Cloudcroft, New Mexico. It was just a very small, like 12 people in the church and one day he invited a prophetess to come. And so God woke her up the night before and said, tomorrow morning in church, there will be someone wearing a blue shirt and you're to prophesy that the person wearing the blue shirt is called to be an evangelist. So she came wow. looking for whoever had a blue shirt. No one was wearing a blue shirt. So she preached for a while, hoping someone would come in, but no one came in late. And then she remembered that all the kids workers were downstairs. So she turned to my dad and said, could you please bring all the kids workers? God has given me a, a word for someone. So they all come up. And none of them are wearing a blue shirt, but there's a long line of kids. And at the end of the line was this cute little five-year-old boy wearing a blue shirt. And she said, God, is this the one? And God said, yes. And so she prophesied over me that day and says, you are called to be an evangelist and go to the nations to, to oh. preach the gospel. And so from one five-year-old evangelist to another, give me five. <laughs> That's amazing. And, and I didn't waste any time. I preached my first sermon when I was six years old. Come on. And, and we still have the cassette tape from it. My parents yes. do. And I sound like an evangelist on that cassette tape. One of the things I say is, if you are saved, stay saved. If you're not saved, you better get saved. <laughs> so, so when you were growing up, that's awesome. Did did you look at 
books of evangelists and, and stories of evangelists. Tell, tell me about how you fed that that passion for evangelism. Yeah, growing up, it's funny. My actually, my first sermon was "People get ready, Jesus is coming." That's a good and sermon. How old good, were you when you? I was there? like five years old. Five right years after old. that, yes. All right. So, and for, as far as books go. Uh, we read, my parents read to us every night. So they read to us The Heavenly Man by Brother Yun. They'd read to us Heidi Baker's books on unconditional love. They'd read to us these old missionary stories and these old evangelists going across the world and preaching the gospel. And so, and grow, I grew up hearing about Reinhard Bonnke. I actually got to meet Reinhard Bonnke when I was 10 years old. And he just inspired me so, so much to go after it and to preach the gospel everywhere and to believe God for big, big things. So who would you say is your favorite evangelist? It's got to be Reinhard Bonnke. It's got to be Reinhard. Amen. Yes. He's, he's an amazing man of God. He is. Led over 80, 000, 80 million mm. people to Christ yeah. in his lifetime. What, what a tremendous uh, achievement. And so that's actually where you and I met yes. at the Christ for All Nations Evangelism Boot Camp, which is being hosted by Daniel Kalinda, who is uh, Reinhard Bonnke's successor. Mm. And so you were a student there, and I was one of the instructors. T tell me some of the things that you learned in school, and, and did you learn anything in my class? Yeah. <laughs> I learned some me? amazing things from Dr. King. I think my favorite thing were the five smooth stones, right? The uh, for the sermon, a story, a solicitation, a scripture, um, a s good structure in it, and the last one is is really important. And I've forgotten it. Those are actually uh, Daniel Kalinda's. Oh. And so he told me to preach it. He, he gave it to me. And then he says, like, this is the structure you, I want you to follow. So the, I'll give him credit. Well, but, the other <laughs> thing I learned good. from you, Dr. King, was I told this chicken story. And Dr. King tells this amazing story. And he puts his whole heart and soul into it. And I learned how to tell a good story and put your whole heart and soul to it. And I've actually told that same story and fallen on the ground just like you did in class. So, so... Can you show our audience how I did it in class? Yes, so in, <laughs> in class, he gets up and he tells the story of the chicken and this chicken dies and he goes around the room and he goes bark, 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 and he falls over completely on the ground and made the best chicken noise we heard all for the whole six months of boot camp. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, so since you graduated so much. from boot camp, you were launched out into evangelism and now you're going to be a, a full-time evangelist? Yes, sir. And, and, and you've already been starting to do outreaches here in yeah. the United States. And, and so you've done an outreach in Winchester, Tennessee, in Nashville, Tennessee, and then in, in Dallas, Texas. Uh, and tell me about those outreaches and, and, and who participated and how did those come together? Yeah, so we just had a heart, like, just kept feeling the Lord drawing us a couple different people to to do something while we were here in the United States. Our trip to Africa got pushed back and so he said, let's let's do something for God right here. The harvest is ripe right here in America. And so let's see what God will do right here. And so we went to uh, one student, Eric Dykes' hometown and in Winchester, Tennessee, we saw 30 people give their lives to Jesus. We saw a youth group, of, uh, we saw a couple youth groups come together and there was about 75 youth there on Wednesday night all of them left healed, filled with the Holy Spirit, and saved. And so that was wow. awesome right there. Uh, we got to see God break off depression off of people. Uh, Eric's cousin uh, got radically saved and set free of uh, a lot of demons and was uh, on dope 20 minutes before one of the services and came and got delivered of those demons and then didn't have any detox symptoms at all, all week long. I'm sure that he can come on and tell that story. But... It's yeah, we'll incredible. definitely listen to his story. Now, tonight we are here in South Lake, Texas, at your home church where yeah. your father pastors, and we're you're doing an outreach. Yeah. Tell me about the outreach. How have you organized it? What's going to happen tonight? And, and yeah. what are you expecting God to do? Yeah, we so we started organizing it by calling my dad, Pastor Ricky, and getting him to get on the phone and to call some other local pastors and just create a little bit of a buzz and to say, hey, we're going to do this and we're going to do something. In the midst of a pandemic, we're believing God that souls are going to be saved, lives are going to be changed, people are going to get healed, people are going to get set free. And this week so far, we've seen over six people give their lives to Jesus. Hallelujah. Wow. That's in the amazing. streets, That's great. in the malls, and all over. Yeah. 
It's been incredible. And tonight, we just organized the event. We got these bounce houses from, uh, from a, our church organization, has these bounce houses at the ready and available for churches. And so we were able to get those and rent those out. We called the food truck and got a food truck out here. And then we just said, let's just believe God for miracles, believe God for his salvations. And so we went around and we invited the public and went door to door. We how, went, how did you get them to, to go? You, you were going through the neighborhoods, door to door, putting flyers out, yep. inviting people to come? Yes, yes, exactly. And we made an event on Facebook and asked them to come on Facebook and just had all of our church people share it with all their friends and say, please share, share, share. Invite your friends uh, via Facebook and then hand out flyers and personal invitations. Now, right before we started this podcast, I noticed that out there, there are already kids that are in the bounce houses. They're, they're bouncing. They're, they're having fun. Yeah. You've got the food truck. People are eating food. I saw you had a little platform set up yep. with, with, with some chairs. And, and so we're going to have a time of, of ministry to people yep. tonight. And uh, how, how many people do you think might come? I'm believing God for 100 people. If we had 100 people, it'd be just absolutely amazing and would just blow, blow me away. I, I think that's tremendous. What, what a tremendous vision because, you know, a lot of people think about doing crusades over in Africa or in Asia. You see thousands of people that, yeah. that come. But, you know, we also need to reach people right here in our backyard, right here in America. And, and so for a, a local church to do an outreach, I think every church should do at least four or five major outreaches a year. Yeah. At least every quarter. Yeah. They should be out there in the neighborhood inviting people to come, doing an yeah. outreach. And, and that's the way that the church grows, is if you're Amen. out there telling people about Jesus. And, and so tell me some about how, uh, you, how does the gift of the evangelist function in a, a local church setting? So, yeah. so obviously you've been here You've been serving your father and his vision. You have this calling as an evangelist. And so how do you function as a, an evangelist, but in, in an American local church setting? Yeah, I think for me, the biggest thing is bringing that faith to the equation. The faith to believe God for big things. Uh, the pastor's wife, my mom, last night said, this is the most exciting thing we've done in two years. Wow. She said, this is so exciting. She said, I thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for bringing some friends with you that would say, hey, we believe God that he can do mighty things even in the midst of everything that's going on in this nation. And so I think just bringing that faith to believe God that God can break things open and that the gospel is powerful and still effective today and that the gospel still works. And so as evangelists, we are like fishermen. Yes. And we're looking for the right bait to, to catch people for Jesus. And just a little bit ago, you showed me some costumes that you guys made as, yeah. as bait because kids like costumes. Tell me about the costumes that the church made. Yeah, so the church does a vacation Bible school every year and they made the costumes for that. And they wrote scripts that just teach kids about the Bible and teach kids about God using these characters like Monsters, Inc. Can we say that? On yeah, there? Go, go for it. So, Mo so you did, you did Monsters, Monsters, Inc., Madagascar, we did um, I won't Despicable tell Me. Disney if you don't. You know? <laughs> Despicable Me. Despicable Me. And we use all those characters to tell the story of Jesus it just in creative ways. And actually, the lion from Madagascar is actually at home in Mexico right now uh, helping a missionary there to preach the gospel. Wow, that, that's tremendous. And so you're using different ways to attract the kids to, to yes. come and then to be able to share with them about Jesus. Yeah. Wow, like, what, what a tremendous blessing. Today we went around with a big minion costume and people were running, people were running to us. Usually we're running out to the people, you know, but the people were running to us and we got to share the gospel with them through that minion being out there is awesome. And, and so you feel called to be a, a, a full-time evangelist. You want to do crusades. T tell me what happens next. Where, where are you going to go and, and, and start preaching to big crowds of people. Yeah, so I'm going to Southeast Asia, going to Pakistan, and we're going to do a crusade there in October, and it's going to be incredible. And then believing God to do one in a crusade in Burkina Faso as well, and uh, also in India. And so just believing God for mighty things. Next year is going to be amazing. We're also going to do a crusade in Mexico, and then maybe do a couple outreaches at home in Dearborn and Baltimore as well. So you're doing events here in the United States and then also 
going overseas. Wow, yes, sir. you're going to see such tremendous fruit. Uh, I'm so honored that you were one of my students, Thank and you. I'm so proud of you. Thank because you, you. you didn't just listen in the classroom. You're putting it to work. You're yes. already leading people to Jesus and yeah. seeing fruit from that. And yeah. I know that all the angels in heaven are rejoicing for all the people that are getting saved. So I, I'm, I'm proud of you. I'm, I'm amazed. Joe, thank you so much for being on the podcast. It's great to have you on today. Thank you, Dr. King. Bless you. Thank you. Daniel King is on a mission to save one million souls a year, but he can't do it alone. Would you consider sowing a financial seed today? To give, please visit www.kingministries.com.